once again at Pine Grove Morning Worship Service. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're joining us via the internet or if you're here in the church this morning. Uh, it's just wonderful to see you. I'm glad, glad that you're attending and that you chose to worship God with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. Shout hallelujah at your name, Lord, and just it's beyond our understanding why you love us so. But Lord, you do. We know that you do. We know that you're here with us. And Lord, just thank you. Thank you this morning for all the blessings of life. Lord, again, this morning we do pray for the, the sick around us, those who've lost loved ones and their bereavement. Lord, we just reach down and touch them all, Lord, and let them know that you're there. That you have the healing for whatever ails mankind. Lord, we pray for the lost. Something will be said, something will be done, Lord, that they will turn to you. And the same prayer comes to our for our government, for our country, for our leaders, Lord, that they will look to you for wisdom and to make good decisions. Come to know you the ones who don't, Lord. It'll help them just like it helps us all to make the right, good decisions in our lives. Lord, we pray for our church, our local churches, that your church, Lord, will be caught with revival, caught up in, in the prayer and fasting. Just understand that you're there for us when we call on you. And Lord, that we need to begin to call on you every single day for answers and not try to find our own. Lord, just be with me as we go through this service. Help me say what you would have me to say. All glory, all glory goes to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Again this morning, Christ died for all men. One time for all the sins of the world. That's just common fact. That's a fact. And people need to understand that, that he did. Romans 5, verse 6, says, you see, at just the right time, but we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now that doesn't say at all that he died for just the good or a special group. And no, instead, it says for the ungodly, we, meaning all of the fallen mankind, which is everyone. Everyone falls into that same category. So he, he died for all. Man's made, you know, has made up a lot of ideas about salvation. They're all for nothing. Because the only way, as we know, to, to God and to salvation is through Jesus Christ. And he came for all that would accept him as Lord. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So, as we say a lot, those who believe otherwise in a different path, and they have some special way of doing good or earning by earning their passage, they're headed for dead ends, eternal dead ends. Uh, it, it just won't work. And, Woe to the ones who lead others that way. You try to teach them that. Matthew 18, verse 7 says, Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person through whom they come. So we need to be very careful when we think, we act, we go with the way of the world. Paul said not to listen to any other gospel or doctrine except what he was told to preach. And that's simply put, Christ crucified and risen for all the sins. And then we can all come into salvation, but only through him. That we must be born again through Jesus Christ. It's a simple message and it's for everybody. Again, no matter where you come from or what you've done, you can be saved. Well, this morning, I'm not going to go back over the last two messages of the last two weeks, other than to say, other than to say that I hope that the praise, 
talked about is stuck in your minds and hearts. And that was go tell someone about Jesus. I hope that's stuck in your minds and your hearts and that it never gets out and that you act on it, not just hear it. So this morning we're going to talk about something different. And what did Christ come to earth for? You know, we're not going to get over a lot of new ground or new, new scripture. We don't need to because the facts are what we need out of scripture and out of the Bible. So what did Christ come to earth for? Well, the answers, you know, we've heard before. Yes, he taught. And he healed the sick. And he raised the dead. But those actually were actions of compassion for mankind when he was here. They, they were the results of his real purpose, the real purpose of why he came. It's sort of like us. We're saved so that we have results. And Christ is an example. He, he came for a purpose, but there were other results of his coming alongside of that real purpose. And or his real purpose is simply in John 3, 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's why he came. And let's, let's think about this this morning, what the times he came and what happened. Well, he began a movement. You know, we talk about different kinds of uh, movements today, different, we branch off, which is a mistake, but we branch off and say, this group is a new movement of Christian. No, there's one Christ, one church. But he began all of that, and he began this movement that we now call Christianity that was so different from all the other concepts of God anywhere in the known world of his time. And he came because of a God who is a loving Father. That concept is totally different. This God who cares for his creation, that's a complete opposite to all the world's man-made gods. Because they're usually gods of wrath and bloodshed and continual upheaval. And they're gods of demand, demands and demands, whereas our God gives. This God that Christ came to teach us about to die so that we could meet. John chapter 12, verse 49 says, For I did not speak on my own, it's Christ speaking, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Christ came to provide eternal life, and that's what he talked about. Everything that he really talked about was leading up to this. Whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. He came on a mission. And that mission was Christ came to introduce the love approach. And that's a phrase I want to get stuck in your head today. It's the love approach came to introduce that, to make an escape, to end sin's bondage. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, of course, this is part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount, but it said, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? King, Christ came to introduce the love approach. And it, the thing that is the total opposite of legalism, filled with judgmental attitudes, that's not the love approach. That's, that's legalism. James chapter 4, verse 12 says, There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Who are you? Who am I? Who are we? 
Christ came for the opposite of this. Christ came to introduce the love approach, which is the opposite of special high standing groups of overseers who demand high esteem of their own. Christ came and he spoke about this. He said in Luke chapter 20, verse 46, Beware of the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour window, widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished more severely. He, he, he came for an opposite to all those things. And he taught us about them. And he came to teach us and introduce the love approach. The love approach, which again is the opposite of critics who only find fault with others, believing they have the only true beliefs, some sort of special revelation. Some of those movements that are out there. Some special revelation. You know, the opposite of critics. Matthew 7, 4 says, How can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your eye? He came for the opposite of that. The opposite of critical, fault-finding, constant turmoil because Christ came to introduce the love approach you getting that stuck in your head I hope so Christ came to introduce the love approach he came to introduce what he heard from the father and what he heard from the father said in Matthew 22 verse 37 says Christ replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, I, I want to tell you something. I do want to get things stuck in our head. The simple things. You see, I'm not a theologian. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trained. I'm not. Well, I am trained because I'm anointed by God to keep the things simple. The things that He would have us to learn that are simple. Another thing, I'm not a linguist. I'm not a student of ancient language. I have no higher learning degrees or special titles after my name. I'm just a common person, a regular person. And I'm glad to be that because Christ said he came after people who were willing. But I'm not any of those higher things. The reason I said that is because there are many things, many things that are contained that others may understand, but they're above my level of understanding. You see, I've never been able to understand why God would always be angry, as some seem to believe, yet send his son to die for our sins. That's beyond my level of understanding. But I am able to understand that God loves even me. I can understand that in, the, in his word. Now why he does, I don't know. But that isn't important. See, that would be one of those things that are above my level of understanding. The why. The important thing is that he does. The other important thing is that I accept it as a gift, simply, and believe his word. You see, Christ came to reintroduce the love approach. He 
He came to do that in a world that didn't accept love. That had turned us back on love. God has cried out since the beginning that he loves mankind. From the garden on. He's cried out that his desire that all men would seek him out and come to be his close family. And he still cries out today through his written word, through his son's life, through the Holy Spirit. They're all provided so that mankind can know God's love. So this morning... My object is, let's add to those things that are stuck in our head and our heart, the love approach. And I don't only get it stuck, but practice it each and every day. So go tell someone about Jesus and how much God loves them no matter what. That's the love approach. Show the world God's love. So that there's something different because of God's love. And this morning I want to say if you've drifted away, we're getting a little more each day what he did for you. That's the way Satan does it. He tempts us to stray a little at a time. Well, turn that around this morning. Get the love approach back in your heart. Pray to God to help you with that. Get back in the right way of doing things. Or this morning, if you've never found the truth about the Savior until now, the fact that God sent him to die for your sins, well, make that right right now too. Don't wait another day. You're in prayer now. God, just keep it up. If you found and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're not in a church, go find one right now. Get inside of it. Start attending. Start helping. Start lifting other people up. Help show that love approach to the rest of the world. Help others to show that love approach to the rest of the world. Help influence someone else's life. Make them wonder what's wrong with you so that they'll look into it and find Christ. If you're in this area and you don't have a church home, you're welcome here at Pine Grove. We meet at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning. We have other, other things too. But this is our major time. We still have some Bible study out there on, on the internet through Zoom. You can find out about that on our Facebook page. You're, you're all invited. But most of all, show the love of God others. And the only way you can do that is to know that he loves you. We're here at Pine Grove Tenor Baptist Church, 102 Silver Tree Road, Shirley, Arkansas. Look us up and come join us. Love to see you here next week. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time again. And Lord, we just... Oh, for all the blessings you did. The fact that you sent your son to die for our sins. That's something we should never, ever, ever get over or take lightly. Ever forget. Thank you so much. Keep us safe, Lord. Empower our lives. Help all those who are search. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
again this morning if you get anything from these these sermons. Share them. They're free to share. They're free to copy. I don't care. They don't bother me. If the Word of God is going out, that's what's important. Have a great week. Remember, God loves you.